guests are such a treat. And for this recipe, I'm going to add in some lovely Simply Better ham, a little bit of pesto and some Drina cheddar cheese. The key to really nice mashed potatoes, so I use roosters here at home, I peel them, I steam them, and then what I do is drain off the water underneath the steamer, let them sit with a tea towel or some nice uh, kitchen paper, and let them steam out, so it dries them out. But if you want a really smooth mashed potato, invest in one of these. This is um, a potato ricer, it's part of my cookware collection, and uh, what you do is you put in the potato, you push it through, there and you will have absolutely lump free potatoes, which is really important. This recipe is great for using leftover mashed potato. So I have some mashed potato here, and then I'm gonna show you just how we just jazz it up, just get flavor in there. We're gonna put in some nice Simply Better ham, we're gonna put in some lovely cheddar cheese. So we'll start off with the cheddar cheese, first of all. So the cheddar cheese I'm using is the Drina cheddar. So this is the extra mature. So this comes from West Cork way down in Bandon. So Dreen is one of the peninsulas and um, it's a really, really fantastic everyday cheddar cheese. Now you can buy the grated cheddar already or you can slice, you know, it comes sliced too. Uh, I usually buy the block at home to be honest with you and then just grate it as I want it. So as you want. I'm using my box grater and then what we're gonna do is use the coarse end. So this is great. This end here in particular is really good for carrots, uh, celeriac, all those kind of vegetables and particularly cheese. So just onto a plate, we're gonna grate this and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put this into my mashed potato. So I slightly warmed the potato, that it's not hot, just to soften it up a little bit. So it just makes it easier. You can do this in a saucepan, but I'm doing it in a bowl. So it's a really nice cheddar. Say if I'm doing like a, a, a wrap or a ham and cheese toasty, that's the cheddar I would use. It's just beautiful, it's gorgeous. Kevin Sheridan was involved with the Simply Better team for this fantastic uh, project. It's a really, really lovely um, product. So I'm gonna put this into our mashed potato. And then what I'm gonna do, plenty of this, we're also gonna put in some pesto. So I'm using some lovely fresh basil pesto. I seem to be using a lot of pesto in my recipes because I really like it. So this is it here. It's it's um, usually in the refrigeration, you know, the refrigerator and done stores. So it's a really, really lovely pesto. So I'm gonna put in two teaspoonfuls of this. And then some ham. So I'll talk about what I, what I have here. Um, you could use some streaky bacon. You're looking for the board be a quality mark. But this is the ham that I'm gonna use here. And this is from Brady's ham. You see the Borbia quality mark. So you're using really good Irish pork. This is the Giovata crumbed. And then we have the honey and clove one. So whichever one you want to use. So this is it here sliced. Get it in that, lovely in a wrap in a sandwich. We use this a lot at home. So it's a really, really lovely product. So I am gonna chop this now. If you just wanted to leave it like that, that will be perfect like for a vegetarian. So we're gonna just literally cut it into little strips. And then I'm gonna add this into the potatoes. So small little cubes. So this is the cooked ham I'm using. If I was using the streaky bacon, the smoky one, which I really like, I would cut that into small little strips or dice and pan fry it. So you cook it first. So just using my knife, lifting it up, and then we're gonna mix this. Now you can put spring onion, you can use lots of other different flavorings, but I think this is perfect. So we just mix this all through. So usually when I make a very, very simple mashed potato at home, or potato puree, we use a uh, steam them as I said, put them through the potato ricer. And then what I do actually, I get my spatula, so it's probably a little bit easier to mix this through. I uh, add in some uh, milk and butter, and sometimes I want a really indulgent mashed potato or potato puree, I put in cream. I absolutely adore it. It's hard to be a really nice mashed potato. So why rooster potatoes? Because they're a very versatile potato. So they are. So that's our mixture ready. Now, if you wanted to, you could let this cool down. I have already some done. That's what it looks like there. You can see the lovely pieces of ham. Once the potato is slightly warm, it's not hot, promise you, it will just um, melt the cheese. So that's it already done there. And the pesto will just, just uh, go through it. So I'll just move this out of the way. And then we're gonna get this. So this is the mixture. Now to get the proper, we call this kind of scaling. So to get the, the, the correct and even size for each um, croquette, we're gonna use the potato uh, scoop. Um, some breadcrumbs. The breadcrumbs I'm using is these from the Simply Better collection, I'll just show you, from Mr. Crumb. So these are the Giabatta breadcrumbs, rustic. What I've done is I've just re-blended them so they're nice and fine. I'm gonna get a little bit more kind of texture and flavor, sesame seeds, I really like them. So plenty of them in there. I do like sesame seeds. I tend to, uh, a lot of my recipes, you know, I tend to 
repeat different things, whether it's sesame seeds or pesto or different things like that. But this is what I do. And the twins that really, really like these um, croquettes and you can make them ahead and you can freeze them. Okay, so we'll do a couple, we'll do probably three or four. So we shape it like that. You can do a round one, but we're gonna do a little cylinder one like that. And then that's gonna go into the flour. So I'm gonna leave that there and it's gonna do the three of these here. So using the potato scoop, just literally kind of squeeze it, roll it. You can use a palette knife, you don't have to be too particular. It's all about the flavor in the croquettes. That's the key into this. I'm often asked, you know, how do you make the perfect mashed potato? Well, it really is good potatoes and then the potato ricer. Honestly, if you steam them and let them kind of, um, kind of rest a little bit, you know, with the kitchen paper, you're gonna get a lovely, lovely, kind of like floury mashed potato and then you soften it with a little bit of milk cream, butter, whatever you want. This technique is called panne, flour. Uh, we have egg, so I'm using the corn fed Simply Better eggs, uh, a little bit of milk, so that's one in there, and then our breadcrumbs. So I'll just have everything here. So you roll this. So what does the flour do? It actually helps the egg stick to it. So just we'll just do that one there. We'll make a little bit of room. So I'm keeping one hand for the flour and one hand just will go into the egg wash. So okay, so one hand dry. You're not covered in breadcrumbs. Now, there we go. That's one done. Let's do the next one. So just to recap, a little bit of seasoned flour, that's just plain regular flour. And then we have some egg wash. So this technique is known as the crumb. Now you can double crumb them, but then you have an awful lot of breadcrumbs. And just, I, I just think it makes them too heavy. That's just a personal thing. So roll this now. And then remember, one hand dry, one hand wet. And then this goes into the... Now you could put different spices into the crumbs, but I think there's so much flavour with the potato, you don't need to be doing that. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to deep fry them in a moment, but I just want to wash my hands. So, you see you have lots of extra potatoes there, I'm going to make loads of these and we can freeze them. If you freeze them, you can put them into a, a Tupperware container and then just cover them and cling for them or, or a lid on them. You can make them ahead and keep them in the fridge for a couple of days, which is perfect. So using a small deep fat fryer, now you can shallow fry them, but if you want to get a really even colour, this is a small little shallow fryer that I have here. The temperature is 190, so it's going to make a little bit of room. Pop that down. So really all you're doing is just reheating the potato. That's all you're doing. So it's going to take a minute or two. So while that's on, we'll just make a little bit of mayonnaise with some whole grain mustard. So just to recap, in the mashed potato, I put in some pesto. I put in some of the Brady's Cooked Ham, and they produce it for... Um, Simply better, so they do. So you can use whichever kind of flavor you want. They have lovely uh, different flavors, but the cheese too is delicious. It is really, really good. And uh, that dream of cheddar is just, it's just a fantastic story. It was a two year project that Kevin Sheridan and the Simply Better team, we were up and down tasting it as it was maturing, you know, with Heather and the team and Simply Better. And it was just, it was just a wonderful, to know that it's milk from single farms, from farmers in the, in, uh, the peninsula here, West Corp and Sidrina, that's it there. And that's the block of it there. So the taste note it says is rich and savory, so it is, so it's a really lovely um, milk sourced from family farms. And that's what it's all about, because we do have such great dairy. Yeah, just be really careful with them. So if, um, so a little bit of mayonnaise, and then we have also some whole grain mustard. We're gonna mix this all together. And that's out there and that will keep in your fridge okay so these are very nearly ready and we're going to lift them out onto some kitchen paper now sometimes if the potato is a little bit wet if you don't double crumb them they can burst out a little bit but don't worry about that so just getting the kind of like the consistency and the flavor is very very important if you double crumb them you have a lot of breadcrumbs so i'm just going to use my tongs kitchen paper and then we're going to serve it with a little bit of salad so i'll just get organized here just one layer in there. They're nearly ready. I want them nice and golden brown. So just in a small little dish, whole grain mustard, mayonnaise. You can use a little bit of pesto if you're not a big fan of mustard. I like it. It wouldn't be one of my number one ingredients. So that's their optional for people if they want it. And you can serve two or three of the croquettes. A really good tip for you with salad leaves, these are from our garden, is tissue paper and cold water. It keeps them 
um, really fresh so it does. So you just wash your salad, put that uh, tissue over it and it'll keep happily in your fridge, you know, for easily uh, three to four days, no problem at all. Now I will dress this with a little bit of vinegar or a little bit of oil, whatever way I have. You can use a little bit of balsamic if you want to. I'll just use some rapeseed oil because it's probably enough flavor. Just a tiny little drizzle of that. And then our croquettes. Okay, we lift these out just very gently. So, they're still soft. So, two or three as you wish. Because they're a big, you know, they're quite a generous, you know, they're... <laughs> Yeah, they're a generous portion. I think one if you were serving it, say maybe you were doing a roast chicken, something like that. But I think this recipe that I'm showing you here uh, on its own is just lovely. You don't need to be adding, um, you know, you don't need to serve it with, with really anything else. They are delicious. And as I said, the twins really like this. And if you look closely, you can see the sesame seeds. You can see the way like it's beginning to kind of come out a little bit. So I'm just going to place just these here. I could use the tongs. Two or three, sure, why not three? So when you put them on kitchen paper, they are hot, it absorbs any excess oil. Uh, the temperature's at 190. So um, that's our potato croquettes. Uh, I've used the Simply Better ham, the beautiful Drina cheddar cheese, try this, it's excellent. And then we also have the pesto in that. And in the breadcrumbs from Mr. Crumb, some sesame seeds, you could put some lemon zest, some curry powder, whatever you want to. The mayonnaise is optional, you can just leave it as it is and then just with a lovely bit of fresh salad. And that's a lovely starter, you can have as a light lunch, but try these potato croquettes. So happy cooking and thank you so much.